What's up guys, Logan here from the Motorcycle Forge. And in today's video, we're gonna get one step closer to perfecting the art of casting and making our own cylinder head. And if you're new here and you're wondering, this isn't a very big cylinder head, this is 50% scale. So I'm practicing with a smaller version to save cost and material and time. And so 100% scale is roughly this big. Quickly cutting up some metal to melt down. A few things we're going to have a go at with this casting to try and improve the quality. We've got this stuff here which is hot topping. That stuff bursts into flames when you put it on top of the molten metal after you've cast it. Keeps the top of it hot so that that's the last part to solidify so that the feeders feed the mold correctly. And the other two additives that I've got for doing the casting is flux which makes the aluminium a bit more liquidy, easier to go into the mold, and degassing tablets which is for removing the hydrogen that the aluminium absorbs when it's molten. Now one thing that's on my mind, all these new uh, things that I'm going to have a go at, they have nice big warning labels all over them with detailed descriptions of all the chemicals and the way that they can try to kill me. So I've got to be careful, uh, especially around this stuff, and take extra precautions. Now, for dealing with all those nasty chemicals, I made myself a really long spoon, which I can use to eat ice cream from very far away. Sort of. Now in this video, because I've already done it several times before, I'm skipping the steps where I prep the mold for burnout. The mold is up to temperature and I'm going to crank up the furnace and get to melting some metal. carefully just pour it Now that didn't go too bad, but it didn't go great either. As you can see, this was the one from last video and this is the one I just done. Cam chain valley is more complete. Uh, inside the head where the camshafts run is more complete. This would actually be able to support camshafts, but unfortunately there's plenty of areas where it is worse off. Um, the finish as well is pretty bad. So yeah, plenty to work on. I'm just gonna get straight back into it and get to the next one. I think the head's getting a little bit ahead of itself. It's already trying to run. There's some bubbles coming out. It sounds like a little single cylinder. Now I've just got it out of the mold and overall it is another big step in the right direction. As you can see, the cam chain valley compared to the one I've just done previous is completely filled up. Now there's still some imperfections. So this side is actually pretty bang on. This side's almost perfect and there's a couple areas where there's been some shrinkage or it's not filled in correctly so I need to sort out why that is happening. Now as you can see I've left the gating system attached to the cylinder head so my plan is I'm actually going to do some test machining so I'm going to use this as a reference with its 90 degree edges just deburr them make sure they're as flat as they can so I can clamp it in the vise on the milling machine and I'm going to try clean up the top as best I can and then I'm going to cut this off and as long as I've got the bottom flat or the top flat I should be able to clamp it and machine but things yeah, never turn out that simple <laughs> Thank you. 
Right, now using my digital angle gauge or degree gauge thing, I've got it roughly within uh, 0.2 of a degree. Now I know none of these surfaces are technically uh, flat and they're unmachined, so I can't really use them as a proper reference, but to do some practice machining, this is probably as good as I'm gonna get at the moment. Now with the top of the head all cleaned up, I have it now clamped upside down in the milling machine with these thingies here. Hopefully this fixture is rigid enough. The other one definitely wasn't that rigid, it was making all sorts of little vibrating noises. I was taking super light skims, so I'll do the same here. Super light cuts and hopefully it doesn't try to chuck a cylinder head at me. And there we have it, I have finished cleaning up the top and the bottom and they're not too bad, there's still some imperfections but the main thing I need to work on is on the intake side here and here and a couple other spots there is some shrinkage still and I was thinking why is that? On the exhaust side it is pretty much perfect, even the surface finish is very good but on the intake side it's no good and I came to the conclusion that even though I had a bunch of uh, feeders right above the areas where the shrinkage is which should you know feed that shrinkage I think the the mass of the intake itself is far bigger than the exhaust so there's more shrinkage occurring and it's stealing material from the thin sections around the intake so I think for the next one I need actual feeders on the intake itself so it stops stealing it from the thin areas around the intake. Now I think this is going to be the last of the 50% scale castings so I'm going to move on to full size. So that means in the next video I am going to cut up this big sheet of uh, stainless here that I have and that there I should be able to make all the flasks I'm ever going to need to make my moulds. Now it's all set to convert my air compressor to a vacuum pump. I got all the fittings, the pipe, stuff that I needed. I even got a wee gauge here which I was going to put in line. And I was going to use this uh, rice cooker which was a cheap nasty one which broke after using it like twice. And I got some acrylic here and I was just going to make a lid, attach everything. But as you can see, for this one here, it's no good. Now that means this is garbage. Right, and with that taken care of, I think that pretty much does it for this video. And so thank you for watching. This has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time. It's probably better for molten metal and stuff. <laughs>